Nope. Ladies, gentlemen, and barbarians of all ages, when it comes to season three, the people still playing the game are finding their fun wherever it lays. For some people, it's funkier builds like the Charge Barbarian we talked about the other day, but for others, it's just all about seeing those numbers go as high as physically possible. So today we're going to talk about the genuine king of barbarian builds, and honestly, all builds in the game. The Hammer of the Ancients Whirlwind Combo Build. This started popping up in Abattoir of Zir, mostly because we had just never been pushed so far as to need to become stronger than what Hoda already was before that point, but once this lovely combo is found, it has just become a staple of true endgame barbarian, the best of the best. The general theory behind these two cores being put together, for those that don't know, is taking advantage of various parts of barbarian that generate fury when you switch weapons. Combined with whirlwind itself being able to go fury positive with the right stats means that hitting whirlwind for a short burst weapon swap is net positive fury gain, while also counting as spending fury for the purposes of items like Banish Lord's Talisman, which guarantees overpowers for every 300 fury spent, or the Ring of Red Fur, which guarantees crits for every 100 fury spent. Because of this, it's actually way more efficient to use net positive fury whirlwind than it is to use a basic skill, once you at least have the resource generation to do so, because it just triggers our damage buffs more frequently by doing so. On top of that, compared to last season, we have the beautiful addition of Charge, which is pretty much part of every barbarian build this season, and the main reason is both that it does great damage, even without buffing it specifically, and arguably more importantly, it gives you unstoppable on a near nothing cooldown with the way that it works these days, which is a really big deal in any content in the game. All that said, let's dive into the actual makings of the build, the skill points and where to put them, the technique slot that we're using, the legendaries and uniques that make it function, and the ones that make it even better, the general stats that you want to aim for on your gear, the way that you want to set your construct up for your build, and then the paragon board setup as well, followed by just any tips that I have from playing this style of build so far. Without further ado then, our basic skill for this build literally doesn't matter as we won't be using it. That said, until you have about 45 or higher bonus resource generation on your gear, you probably do want to use a basic skill, and you can do that in this same build by just swapping in Lunging Strike instead of Whirlwind until you reach that threshold. In any case, spend two points here wherever you need to, then move on to your core skills. And of course, to start this off, we'll be taking Whirlwind itself, as well as its base enhancement, having it generate Fury for every enemy hit with bonus Fury for hitting Elites too. Then we of course grab Hammer of the Ancients, our main damage dealer, its enhancement for bonus damage depending on how many enemies it has hit recently, and then Furious Hammer of the Ancients, which increases the damage of the skill relative to how much fury you have when casting it. And it's not percentage, it's per fury, which is why we hard stack bonuses to maximum fury wherever we can, as they translate directly into bonus damage for this skill. We also take the rest of the ranks in Hammer of the Ancients to actually bring it up to five. Worth mentioning, there is only one rank actually put in Whirlwind here, the bonus ranks are just from my gear. Then we move on to our defensive skill cluster, and here we reach a point where the build does have some variants. The one that you pretty much definitely want is Rallying Cry, along with its enhancement and also Tactical Rallying Cry. Altogether, granting you an instant pop of fury along with a fury generation and movement speed buff while active, then I recommend having a second shout. For a more balanced build, you probably want to have challenging shout for a bit more defense, as this build will one-shot any enemy below like a tier 90 nightmare dungeon, even without the bonuses that you could be having from Warcry. So Warcry is essentially just, you know, icing on the cake if you're already defensively strong enough for the content you're doing. That said, for speed farming, that's the way to go. In any case, my main recommendation for general stuff that's actually sort of difficult for you is challenging shout, of course with its enhancement and then also the tactical version too, for just some bonus fury generation. Then we take some passives in this cluster as well, three ranks of imposing presence for bonus maximum life, one rank of martial vigor for 4% damage reduction from elites, one rank of outburst over here, mostly just as a gateway to one rank of tough as nails, which both gives you thorns, but also makes a portion of thorns damage dealt count as bleed, which makes it so the moment an enemy hits you, they start bleeding, activating any bleed requirement affixes that you have going on to both boost your damage and your tankiness. Then we move on to the next cluster over here, and of of course, over here we're going to be taking charge as well as its base enhancement, and then also power charge. This lets us have a high damage source of unstoppable as well as high movement ability. It hits multiple targets, it can stun enemies, and resets the majority of its own cooldown just by hitting three enemies or more per cast. There's not much more to say about it really, it's just incredible. Then we take one rank of aggressive resistance for a bit of damage reduction while berserking, one rank of battle fervor for a short burst of berserking after charge actually hits an enemy to help with our uptime on this buff, and then three ranks of prolific fury for a big bonus of fury generation while you're berserking as well. Then in the next cluster over, we only have passives, three ranks of pit fighter for a bonus damage to close enemies, as well as damage reduction from distant enemies. Then one rank of thick skin for some fortified generation when you're taking damage, then three ranks of counter offensive, just for a pretty notable boost to our damage when you have fortify for more than 50% of your health, which you bro just always will. Then we go to the ultimate skill node cluster and pick up our ultimate skill, which is Wrath of the Berserker, as well as taking its enhancements too, which make it as a whole grant unstoppable, 
movement speed and resource generation while active, as well as granting us an enhanced berserking that scales with fury, spent up to 100% damage bonus. We spend fury like crazy, so building that up is really easy to do. And the fun part about this is by the same principles of the snapshotting stuff that people are doing with certain legendary aspects, this buffed berserking from Wrath of the Berserker actually persists until you drop berserking entirely. Whether you gain new berserking or just extend the duration like we do, as long as you don't drop the buff completely, you keep your massive damage boost from this ultimate, which essentially lets you have it at 100% uptime if you can't extend it properly. Then we just grab a ton of passives in this cluster too, through ranks of Heavy Handed for bonus critical damage, through ranks of Brute Force for an overpower damage boost as well, and then through ranks of Wallop over here for bonus damage with maces against vulnerable or stunned targets, one rank of Tempered Fury over here for a small bit of bonus maximum fury, three ranks of Furious Impulse to grant fury when swapping weapons, and then three ranks of Invigorating Fury, which grants you healing for every 100 fury spent, and another, this is another reason that the Whirlwind replacing a basic skill technique here is so helpful, as it just provides more constant healing while you use it this way. Then we finally have our key passive, and of course this is going to be Unbridled Rage, increasing fury costs, but also increasing the damage of core skills by a massive amount. That does it for skill points then, so let's talk about our technique slot here. We apply bleeding through other methods, so the best use of the slot here is going to be the axe technique for simply bonus damage to vulnerable enemies. Then we'll be moving on to our legendaries and uniques within the build, starting off with Tybalt's Will. This was always good for every class in Season 2 when it first came in, but it became harder to work with this season as Metamorphosis disappeared, which was a source of Unstoppable for everyone. That said, Tybalt's Will is actually purely better for Barb this season than it was, simply due to the changes to Charge. What I mean specifically is these pants give you 40% multiplicative damage boost while Unstoppable and for 4 seconds afterwards, and the new version of Charge, even without bonus ranks, has right around a 4 second cooldown as long as you hit 3 enemies, whilst well, you keep this buff nearly permanently active. On top of that though, Tybalt's Will also gives you Fury when turning Unstoppable, but it doesn't do that if you regain Unstoppable while already Unstoppable, so lengthier bursts of this, like from Wrath of the Berserker, will actually stop you from generating Fury repeatedly. But because Charge is just a momentary burst of Unstoppable, you actually get the Fury boost every single time you use it, so it's really just great. Then we have the Banished Lord Talisman over here, guaranteed overpower every 300 fury spent and significant boost to the damage done when an attack is both an overpower and a crit, which we do often. And I should probably mention now, one of the cool parts about Whirlwind being used in this build is it physically cannot use our overpower procs. It's just not possible on a channeled skill to overpower, which means that this will always apply to Hammer the Ancients, not Whirlwind, which is where we want it to be. Then we have the Ring of Red Fur as well, guaranteed crit with Hammer the Ancients, essentially every other cast with the way that we play this, as well as a damage boost too. Then we have to point out the obvious, if you had the Harlequin Crest Uber Unique, you'd use it over the helmet, obviously, and if you had the Grandfather Uber Unique, it would be your slashing weapon, but I have neither of these and we'll show you the alternatives instead. For our legendaries then, we will be starting for our weapons, and for our two-handers and double effectiveness, we have Limitless Rage, which increases the damage of your next core skill cast when you generate fury past your maximum. Then we also take the Edge Master's aspect for damage scaling on skills relative to what percentage of your maximum resource you had when you cast it, which for us will be maximum or close to it every single time. Then on our one-handers, we have the Aspect of Ancestral Force, which both boosts the damage of Hammer of the Ancients, which is of course great for us, but also gives it a wider impact radius, rather than just the small patch of land it would hit without this. Then we have the Aspect of the Earth Striker for a guaranteed overpower with bonus damage every eight times that you swap weapons, which is pretty much guaranteed to only be actually usable on charge or on our Hammer of the Ancients, which is great. As well, we have Whirlwinds set to be used by our dual wield weapons. Hammer of the Ancients is of course the big hammer, and then charge is set to the big slashing weapon. That way, anytime we use a different one of our damaging abilities, we switch weapons, which generates fury for us and more overpowers too through this. Then for our second ring, we have the aspect of Unrelenting Fury. This gives you a fury refund if you kill an enemy or hit a boss with a core skill. We do this constantly, and because it scales with our increased fury spent from Unbridled Rage, it is an extremely powerful resource aspect. Then we have our gloves, which is sort of an interchangeable slot. Here I actually have Ancestral Charge, adding a perpendicular line of ancients, charging along with you to widen the radius, increasing the ease of hitting multiple enemies just to keep the cooldown low, as you want to use charge as much as possible for the fury boost and triggering Tybalt's damage bonus too. Instead of this, you could do something like the elements aspect, which does boost your damage, but personally I find the damage of this build is just so overkill that I'd rather have more utility than like something like this. On our boots then, we have the Relentless Berserker aspect, which is actually giving us a lucky hit chance to extend active berserking by 2-4 to four seconds when hitting with a core skill, and this is the main way that we keep our berserking uptime high and keep Wrath of the Berserker active a lot longer than it's supposed to be. And all it requires is dense enough packs of enemies around you, which will include any Nightmare Dungeon and Vaults this season as they're all pretty well packed. Then on our chest piece we have the Juggernaut defensive aspect, the new one, a large shark of bonus armor at the cost of double evade cooldown. It's not that big of a deal though, with charge being
being what it is for us this season with the mobility and unstoppable that it have, and the armor bonus from this aspect is more valuable than disobedience without the cost of having to build it up first too. So it just puts this up nicely and gives us the armor cap really easily. It just makes it really, really effective. Then we have our head slot and here comes some interesting alternatives for the build. For pure damage, you sort of want Godslayer Crown. It just gives us a bit of a damage boost when incapacitating elites are hitting bosses, as well as the occasional pulls are nice too, and then the stats on it are just solid for the build in general anyways. If you instead want more defense, you can stick on a helmet that has the iron blood aspect, for example, for reduced damage depending on the number of bleeding enemies around you, and again we make enemies bleed the second they do damage to us, or you can do a larger change, swap out Rallying Cry as a skill for iron skin, then put on the iron warrior aspect to make iron skin also grant massive damage reduction. That last option there actually reduces the damage output of the build by a decent amount, but again, this build still one-shots the majority of enemies in the game even while you do make these sort of detours from the pure damage route. Even if you go more defensive, you will still one-shot 90% of things in the game. That does it for Legendary's unique then, so let's talk about the actual stats and affixes that you want on the gear itself. For offense, damage while berserking and overpower damage are your really big ones and you just want a ton of stats. Main stats, all stats, all that's ideal. You want ranks of Hammer of the Ancients as well on your gloves for sure. Crit chance isn't really necessary thanks to our ring unique, but crit damage is great and so is vulnerable damage too. You absolutely want cooldown reduction wherever you can grab it as far as things important to the function of the build. You also want resource generation affixes on any piece that can have it, as well as high rolls ideally on that stat too. You also want maximum fury bonus affixes wherever you can as well. For defense, you want all of your elemental resistances to be taken care of ideally through a combination of your boots with three different resistance roll affixes and some sort of movement speed, the gem slots on your jewelry, and then just the bonuses that you have innately on the jewelry itself. Then your chest you want to be a defensive haven, basically, giving you things like a damage reduction from close, from distant, from bleeding, general damage reduction, all that good kind of stuff. With that covered then, let's move on to our seasonal mechanic, the construct itself. I finally have all of my stones, so big day for us on that front, and of course you want Flash of Adrenaline, which is a buff, buffing your player by 20% just damage-wise while active. Duration support increases the duration of the buff, and then tactical support reduces the cooldown of the buff. Both of these at a high enough level make this buff just have 100% active uptime. Then we have Genesis on here as well to boost the buff by 150%, which is what makes it permanently active 50% multiplicative damage boost. And yeah, that is pretty nuts. Then for our second governing stone, we have Tempest, the never-ending spreading and growing dot, and on it we have the resource support stone for even more resource generation, thus giving us more damage. We have bleeding support to help spread bleeds even more, and then Evernight, which boosts all skills by four ranks for two seconds every time the skill activates, and the skill activates every 1.1 second in the setup, so the extra ranks are permanent as well. Then we have only one major piece of setup remaining, and that is going to be our Paragon board. So let's dive on in with the starting board here. You want to progress up the left side for the bonus health and armor rare nodes, and then wrap up to the glyph socket itself and stick in the exploit glyph here for bonus damage to vulnerable enemies and applying vulnerable when you first damage things. Given that we one shot, that helps even more. Take the dexterity needed to boost the glyph, then head up the left side through the damage boosting rare node and grab the board connection gate, sticking on the Warbringer board with the glyph socket in the bottom right side. Head up and then left through the maximum fury and fury on kill rare and magic nodes, wrapping around to the legendary power itself, which is fortify granted based on fury spent, and again, we spend a hell of a lot of fury. Then and we head back over to the glyph socket itself, and here we're going to be sticking in the crusher glyph for a bunch of bonus damage to actual attacks with maces, and then a multiplicative damage boost to overpowers with maces as well. Then we grab the rare nodes in the radius as well, and the strength required to activate the glyph, then you want to head out the right side of the board, attaching on the carnage board, with the glyph socket on the left side. We head through the bottom path over to the socket itself, and then in here we're going to be putting in the ire glyph, which gives us a ton of damage while berserking, and also some reduced damage from elites while berserking too. Mop up as much strength as you can easily access in this area, as this is the most important glyph to actually fuel, then you want to grab the rare nodes as well for even more bonus goodness. Then you want to head out the bottom side to get the legendary node itself for bonus attack speed when you crit while berserking, which is of course really good, we crit all the time and we're berserking constantly, so this is just a bunch of bonus attack speed. Then you want to grab the rare and magic nodes here that give you damage while berserking, then we're actually going to round back up here and once again grab more rare and magic nodes giving you damage while berserking and a little bit of berserking duration, then you're actually going to exit out of the top side of this board, which we're going to be attaching on the blood rage board with the glyph socket in the bottom right side. From here you want to head up and over to the glyph socket itself, and in here we're putting in the martial glyph, which is a bonus to the magic nodes in the radius, which is nice in itself, but also after casting a shout skill, it reduces the cooldowns of your non-shouts by 4 seconds, which is pretty massive specifically for charge more than anything else. Then you want to grab the rare and magic nodes that are in the radius as well, because you might as well, grab the actual strength required to function with the glyph, and then you can just go at the top and wrap around to the legendary node 
Shroud itself, which gives you a 10% chance to grant Berserking for 5 seconds when you kill a bleeding enemy, as well as giving you a bunch of bonus damage depending on your damage while Berserking bonus, your stat on your character. And this is one of our big synergies as a Berserking Barbarian build. It actually gives you just general damage on top of your damage with Berserking, which lets you double dip in a stat that we want to get a lot of anyways. And of course, because it's right there, we grab the rare magic nodes that give you even more damage while berserking. After that, you want to go back down to the board below, actually, and we're going to be heading out the right side of it and attaching on the decimator board, with the actual right side of it having the legendary node on it. We then head right over to the glyph socket itself and stick in the dominate glyph here, which gives you a bunch of extra overpower damage, as well as giving you one more guaranteed overpower to actually be on your list, which can again only trigger with charge or hammer the ancients, which makes it even better. Then you want to grab the vulnerable damage reduction rare node that's over here and head to the legendary note of the board itself, which grants you 10% bonus damage after making an enemy vulnerable, and a bonus 10% on top of that when you overpower a vulnerable enemy. Then we go back to the previous board, and this time we're going to be heading out the bottom of the board to actually attach the Weapon Master board with a legendary node in the top right. We're going to be heading right over to it, grabbing the All Element Resist Rare node along the way just because we can, and then grabbing the legendary node itself, with the power being 4% of your Max Fury granted whenever you switch weapons. Keep in mind, that does also scale with our resource generation bonuses too. Then then for our final board, we're heading back up to the Bludge Raid board here and exiting out the right side, sticking on the Bone Breaker board with the legendary node in the bottom left side. You want to head directly down to it then, grabbing the damage reduction while fortified just because it's right there, it's one point for a good bit of damage reduction. Then with our final point, we get the legendary node itself, which simply gives you a guaranteed overpower once every 12 seconds, which will again only apply to Charge or Hammer of the Ancients. And that's your full Paragon board setup covered then, so let's talk about simply how to play it in action. Generally you want to charge to start and any fight that you take, then hit Challenging Shout before the damage starts piling in on you. Use Wrath of the Berserker and Rallying Cry in tandem so that they fuel each other properly. Continue using Charge on cooldown if there are three or more enemies to hit. Then aside from that, it's alternate between one single type of Whirlwind and then smashing down Hammer the Ancients. With the idea being the weapon swapping this way is quick, it builds both Banished Lords and Red Furs buffs, and then you slam down with Hoda consistently for millions and millions of damage, and you're also healing yourself a massive amount the whole time too. And that just about does does it then everyone, your new best barbarian build in season 3 and honestly the best build in the game right now really. I'm interested to see how the release of leaderboards will shake things up with this, what kind of meta will develop around it likely being a more speed focused activity, but generally when it comes to anything we currently have, this build right here is the king of it all. I hope you've enjoyed this then, and hopefully you enjoy the build too if you actually try it out for yourself. Like if you liked the video, subscribe to the notification bell for more, and most importantly ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye